at Locked On Bama, we're just sitting on G, waiting on O. I don't know why I say that all the time, because uh, that's something Trooper Taylor used to say. But anyway, here we go. Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me. Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, how are you today? Yeah, it's been a rough day, but, you know, you know. I know how it goes. I have rough days on a consistent and thorough basis. Uh, Jimmy, you wrote an article for On3 recently talking about the Utah State quarterback and how, you know, we always joke about Ashawn Robinson looks so old or Lorenzo Whammy Ward was at Alabama – from the Bear Bryant era until the middle of Mike Shula's tenure. But apparently Utah State's quarterback's been in college football literally for like six or seven years. What is going on? And tell us about it. I literally uh, – I'm pretty good with eligibility, but I literally, based on the bio that I read, uh, which is on, by the way, the Utah State website, <laughs> I can't even figure out how, how he's eligible – and I don't care. I don't even care if he's ineligible. Just stick him out there. You know, it's Utah State. I, I, you know, we should win this game. Even if Logan Bonner is, is is in his fourth year in the NFL, we should win this game. Um, so I don't care. But I just say that as an example of, yeah, this cat is really mature. Per the bio I read, he's class of 16. Uh, and he redshirted in 16. And he's been playing in games since 17. So I, I mean, and, and I understand a COVID year, but but anyway, there, there's I, I can't figure it out. And again, I don't care. But this, he's a good player. He's a good player. Uh, he did develop late. Uh, I think he's a great example, Luke, of even at the group of five level. This is not a highly recruited quarterback. He was barely one of the top hundred. He was barely ranked in the top one hundred quarterbacks coming out of high school. Uh, it sounds with Arkansas State does not play at all in 16, 17, and 18 at Arkansas State. I mean, when you're extremely lightly recruited and you don't get on the field for three years at a Sunbelt school, you know, it's just a perfect example of why we give up on kids so early and and, and why, you know, why that's dumb. <laughs> Here's a kid that now he started playing in 19, year four. And he's pretty good. He's pretty good. And, and he gets hurt. He gets hurt. He becomes a starter and he gets hurt, has to miss the rest of the year. Comes back in 20, the COVID year at Arkansas State. Hell, it's his fifth year in college by then. But great year. Set some school records as one of the best quarterbacks in the Sun Belt. Uh, did really well through four touchdowns against South Alabama, I noticed. Uh, really good player in 2020. Then the head coach, Blake Anderson, uh, gets the Utah State job and, and leaves from Arkansas State to Utah State. And Logan Bonner follows him. And he goes out there, and in 2021, last season, he explodes. I think 38, 3,900 yards of offense sets just about every Utah State school record there is. I think he threw 36 touchdown passes, which is a whole heck of a lot. And, and now he's back again somehow, some way. He's back again. So he's the best player. I even went to the trouble uh, of asking a journalist that covers uh, Utah State football just to be sure. I sent him a note and I said, uh, "Hey, I want to do a story or a little uh, a little piece on Utah State's best player. It looks to me that's Logan Bonner, is it not?" And and he said, "Yeah, yeah. If I had to pick one player on the team, I think our best player it's Logan Bonner." So, um, so that's why I wrote him. I was just interested in what kind of what kind of player he is. Is he an NFL player? Probably not. I don't think he's drafted, but he might be, and he's certainly going to get an opportunity in an NFL camp. Uh, we will play quarterbacks better than Logan Bonner this season, but we will damn sure play quarterbacks worse. I mean, th th this is not – this is this is a guy probably right in the middle. We'll probably play five or six better than him and five or six worse than him. Uh, but, but that means he's a good quarterback. We damn sure won't play anybody older than him. No, no, no. This kid's like uh, 
Kendall Randolph is called grandpa on our team. And, and keep this in mind, our, our kids call Kendall Randolph grandpa. He signed in 17. This dude signed in 16. Jeez. All right. Just to illustrate your point, I was able to get a few pictures of Logan Bonner. Here he is back when he was uh, with Arizona's uh, Arkansas State, excuse me, you know, just sort of bright eyed, bushy tailed, wet behind the ears. Here he is now. He looks wow. like he's had some life has hit him. <laughs> that's um, a grown, he's been through some that's a grown man. And, that's, and I've that's also. Man. That's my uncle Logan Bonner, my great uncle Logan Bonner. And I figure here's the other thing, Jimmy, just through the math, uh, not the math, the wizardry of the Internet. I've been able to find a picture of him, how he'll look. Should he continue on this life arc in about 10 to 12 years? <laughs> <laughs> that makes you never going to get old. <laughs> Let's, um, hey, I, I'm 100 percent for dragging that joke into the ground. I, I mean, I, yeah, I will still be laughing 500 times from now. Good one. That's uh yeah. You can call me House of the Dragon. That joke into the ground. That's what you can call me now. So that way, I'm, I'm more in a terrible tired. mood, and that fixed it. <clears throat> um, Jimmy, let me tell everybody about Bet Online. That's where you want to go to get that bet in, and it is time. It is time for you to go get that bet in on BetOnline.net. It's your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this year's opening games. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scopes. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, that's where the game starts. All right, Jimmy, uh, Nick Saban had a press conference yesterday. Um, it wasn't nearly as exciting as that time he told uh he he told the radio crew hey look if, if our players want to chirp uh i told him to join the debate team but he said it with more a few more colorful words that uh the good people at locked on have asked us to remove um <laughs> but he did say something interesting he did say something really interesting if you ask me he said drew sanders who has since transferred to arkansas and will be a starter for the razorbacks had he stayed at Alabama, he'd be a starter this year. My question is, whose spot does he take? Right. Yeah, I have a pretty, I'm pretty sure I know what he's talking about there in terms of and, – and keep in mind, this is just my read. You know how, like, uh, Travis Ryer on BOL does an excellent segment called uh, What Coach Saban Said and What It Really Means? <laughs> this, is, this is me doing Travis, like, what it really – what it really means is Nick is still uh, upset that Drew Sanders left. Yeah, that's why he threw that in there. He threw that. In. He's like, "Hey, Drew, remember how I told you you'd start here? You'd be starting here." You know, that's that's him uh, winning the argument. I'm sure he was trying to win as Drew was packing his stuff. You know, at Brian Hall and 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 you know, loading up the U-Haul, and Nick was showing him the depth chart and the pie charts on the graphs, and and then and Drew left anyway. No, uh, I think. Uh, I think the position that Coach Saban was trying to sell him on uh, was weak side linebacker, the Jalen Moody position. Uh, and, and I think Nick was trying to tell Drew that, that he should move inside. Now, here's – and Drew didn't want to. Drew wanted to stay outside because he thinks he has a pro future there, and he's probably right. Drew's a hell of a football player. Um, here's some irony, though. Drew's like, no, no, I don't want to play inside. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. And he picks out Arkansas, and where is he playing? He's playing inside. He's playing inside at Arkansas. They have a 3-3 defense. He's playing Mike. He's he's lining up the front seven. He's the middle linebacker at Arkansas. We were trying to sell him on weak side linebacker here, the will linebacker spot. Uh, so that's what, what Coach Saban was talking about. Uh, I, I think it's weak side linebacker. I saw some people say tight end. Drew, Drew's a heck of a player, but he wasn't going to transition to tight end in a few months and beat out Cameron Latu. That's now he might have played at tight end uh, and be the, been the second guy or the third guy, maybe in some sort of a, a competition with Robbie Oost for the second spot. But uh, he wouldn't have beat out Latu, and we know he wasn't going to beat out Will Anderson, Dallas Turner, or frankly Chris Braswell, who I think moved ahead of Drew as well. So uh, he was talking about Moody's spot, and Moody's a good player. Moody's a good player. As a matter of fact, I think Moody is so good. 
uh, who am I to disagree with Nick Saban? I'm not a hundred percent convinced Drew would beat out Moody in a fair fight. Huh? Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. Um, I, and I and I was trying to figure out like he's not. He, it was him or Dallas Turner last year, right? right? Dallas right. Turner came in when Drew got hurt. So right. I was thinking, you're not. I mean, and I love Drew Sanders. I would love Drew Sanders to be on this team. That'd be awesome. Okay. But I think Dallas Turner's better. And I mean, I don't think I'm nutty for thinking that. No, no, he is, and I think Braswell's better. And, and and none of this is to say. See, this is how good Alabama is. We have to get past this idea that a few, just a few of our fans have, not everybody, but a few fans. Well, if they're not playing, they're not very good. But Alabama has a lot of players that don't play. They're really good. You Drew would have been our fourth outside linebacker, and he's probably among seriously uh, top twenty outside linebackers in the whole country. Maybe top fifteen. And he'd have been like our fourth best. That's just because we're absolutely loaded with elite talent at that spot. So if he wanted to start, and he should be starting, Drew is a really good player. I'm telling you, uh, somebody told me, and I hate that I'm stealing this without knowing who, uh, but I read or was told uh, someone talked to Barry Odom, the defensive coordinator of Arkansas, and asked Barry Odom, uh, Catalan's back. I assume he's your best player. And Barry Odom said, no, no, Drew Sanders is our best player. Best player on the Arkansas defense. Uh, and, and and would have been top six or eight at Alabama, probably, uh, you know, but the fourth outside linebacker. And, you know, that's, look, more power to him. I'm pulling for him. I want him to go to Arkansas, yeah. kick butt, make second team all SEC, and then go to the draft. That's what I want him he to do. He needed to be a starter. He played great. He he. It, the fact that he's not a starter would have upset me too. I mean, Drew Sanders was a proven starting star football player in this league. We just didn't have room for him at the position he wanted to play. Uh, I, I have no hard feelings uh, about Drew Sanders leaving at all. I understand it uh, uh, completely. Uh, it's just a little, and I, I think it, what sticks in Coach Saban's crawl and what gets to me a little bit is he didn't want to move inside and stay, and he goes to Arkansas and freaking moves inside. So I'm sure that gets Coach Saban's blood pressure up a bit. Yeah, but those are the kind of things that keep him in coaching. So, I mean, I, I'm sort of happy to see it, I guess. I mean, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, you know, we, we, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Something's, something's going to get him fired up Saturday night, I'm sure. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to get into our predictions for SEC games and maybe a couple of big games that don't involve Alabama, as tomorrow's podcast will be all about predicting stuff for the Alabama-Utah State game. Okay, so let's look at some of the games we have coming up here uh, this weekend, Jimmy. Starting tonight, because uh, I'll put this podcast out here on Thursday, uh, it's going to be Tennessee – and Bowling Green. Oh, excuse me, Ball State. I said Bowling Green. Ball State. Um, Does it matter? Yeah. I mean, Does it's, it matter? no, State it doesn't matter. Ball. Blowout Tennessee. I think I think Tennessee is going to be pretty good. Um, yeah. I think this will be a, a – Hendon Hooker will look really good in this contest. Their fans are geeked to the gills, yeah. and um, so that's great. Uh, this will be funny. Also, you know what stands out to me about – yeah, I think it's a Tennessee blowout. I'll go 56-7 or something. Uh, yeah. It'll be a blowout. Tennessee fans are so starved to be good, and who can blame them, right? I mean, who can blame them? I, I ain't going to blame any Tennessee fan that's fired up about this season, this team. They're going to win like 56-7, to seven, and, and and they're going to use that as evidence that the team is great. Yeah. Despite the fact that during this long run of Tennessee being mediocre or worse, they occasionally did beat teams like this 56-7. to seven. Here's the, a couple of other things about Tennessee. Tennessee is last in the SEC in terms of last time they defeated a top 10 opponent. Do you know what wow. year that was? They're dead last. And, and Vanderbilt is one year ahead of them. So Last time them. Tennessee beat a top 10 opponent? Yeah, what, I'm going to say that. 03, but don't tell me it was that long ago. No, it was 06. Wow. 06 is the last time the University of Tennessee defeated a top 10 opponent. That's amazing. That for Andy for did it in Nick, Entire Nick Saban dynasty – Tennessee has not won a game against a top 10 team. I mean, that's crazy. Um, here's uh, – there, there was something else I was going to throw out about there. I had another stat, and I just 
forgot it. I don't, I don't maybe I'll remember it here in a minute, but I mean, I, I was trying to keep two stats juggling up here. Yeah, and whatever the stat was, it probably said Tennessee hasn't been very good in a long time. <laughs> that was that was roughly where it where I was it's falling. Roughly. At. Um, okay, then the other game tonight is Missouri, Louisiana Tech. That can one could be a little tougher. I suspect yeah. Missouri will get the win. We don't need to get into it. I'll, um, I'll put Missouri on upset alert, though. Upset alert. Upset okay. alert. Now, I think Missouri's going to win, by the way. I mean, my, my pick is Missouri wins. I'm going to say they're going to win 24 to 7. I know what but I was going to say. Upset alert. All right. I know what I was going to say. Um, when we were doing our previews for Sports Blitz, a show I do on Tuesday nights, you can catch us on Facebook Live from 7 to 9, by the way. Um, when we were talking about that, you know, uh, my Auburn cohort said something about Georgia and the, you know, 40-year drought between national championships and all this. I said, you know, that that's funny, and I've used it too. I mean, I've, I've joked about Georgia and their 40-year drought. But, you know, before Auburn won theirs in 2010, Auburn had – a 50-year, three-year drought. Um, and here's the thing. Tennessee right now has, what, a 22-year drought? No, a 24-year drought. Do I think it's really going to be 16 more years? I mean, do I think Tennessee is going to win a national championship within the next 16 years? I don't. Now, things can change. I mean, if you had asked an Alabama fan in 98, will Alabama win a national championship in the next 16 years, we probably all would have said, hell no. Um, or you know, if you maybe not with ninety nine of there, but if you'd asked us uh, after the UCLA game in two thousand, we would have said hell no. Um, but uh, you know, you could get a coach, you could get the right dude, and all this other stuff, and the playoff expansion may come, and that may help them, whatever. But I'm going to tell you that forty year joke thing isn't going to be quite as funny to some Auburn, Tennessee, other fans, uh, Florida fans, maybe even. You know what I mean? I can't believe it just struck me now, despite my making 40-year drought jokes, that I've never really associated it with the uh, 40-year-old virgin movie, which is funny. Uh, you know, that's, that's what they should do. It show Kirby, I mean, uh, Kirby getting his chest waxed and go, oh, Kelly Clarkson. That'd be funny. <laughs> um, that's a 40-year-old virgin joke, people, if you hadn't seen the movie. Um so Sam Houston, Texas A&M, I'm not going to even bother with it. I'm not going to bother with some of these stinky ones. Now, uh, Auburn Mercer, not going to bother with it. Vanderbilt, Elon, not going to bar- bother with it. Um, is Auburn fans going to all of a sudden hey, – well, it's over – this is – now I'm glad I, I'm glad you brought this up because I rarely bring it up before the games, but, but now's the time to bring it up. There is no overreaction Sunday like opening weekend. True. Good, bad, or indifferent. People make way too much of the first game, no matter the opponent, no matter the score, no matter if it went great, no matter if it went terrible. It is overreaction Sunday, and that Auburn-Mercer game is a good reminder that Auburn will win that game something like 49-3, to 49-10, right. to 10, or 56-10, to 10, and they'll go, whew, thank goodness, I thought we might be bad this year. Yeah, You don't is- know. You don't know how this, this has nothing to do with out. anything. No, no. Regardless right. of how bad you beat Mercer, or put it this way, maybe Auburn only beats Mercer twenty-one to to twelve, and and then they panic. Oh God, it's gonna be just as bad as we thought. You don't know. You, you don't know. You can't look at the first game and know how the season's gonna play out. No, no, no one really knows that. But you um, can suspect. You can suspect them. Here are a couple of games. I just all I want you to do. Don't give me a score. Just give me the. It do, okay. does Georgia State have a chance to get South Kakalaki, Memphis no. against Mississippi State, or Maybe Troy against no. Memphis? Okay. Uh, no, 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 and no. I, I like yeah. the SEC to romp in all those games. And, and Miami, Kentucky. I should Miami, Ohio, Kentucky. I should have thrown that in there. Kentucky wins big, even though Chris Rodriguez is out. Yeah, that's boy. How silly is he? I mean, that's a DUI thing. I think. What a, what a dumb. Thing for him to do when he's like set to be the top or at least top three running back in this conference. That's just silly. In, um, in the age of Uber, in the age of Uber, you know, we're in the ridiculous. age of Uber, and and especially on college campuses. I, I, I part time live on a college campus, and you know, you've heard me on the show talk about at at, at night, starting at five o'clock, the Ubers congregate in this parking lot across the street from my condo and I'll see them out there. They're all talking and then they're, they're off on call. They're just sitting there waiting for calls. That's right. All right. So two games then to, to pick uh, outside of Alabama, which we'll again handle tomorrow. Um, 
Cincinnati, Arkansas. Here's something I didn't know yesterday. Ooh, I got to ride around one. Mississippi. I got to ride around Mississippi all day yesterday. So I was able to listen to some national pundits and they talked about this game. Said, yeah, they lose Desmond Ritter. They lose Jerome Ford, who of course played at Alabama for a while. Uh, but they return their entire offensive line, which is probably crucial. And they've been through uh been in the trenches a little bit and they've been to the playoffs. I still like Arkansas in this case. I like KJ Jefferson a lot, I like Drew Sanders a lot. I think Arkansas has got a lot of talent even without uh, Burks at catching passes this year. I think it may hinder them later on to not have him. But uh, against Cincinnati, I think Arkansas can pull this off. Also, kudos to um, to Arkansas for scheduling Cincinnati and BYU. And one other thing we thought about on the Montgomery Sports Show I call in on Wednesdays, um, this is another reason Cincinnati playing and BYU playing Arkansas is another reason this Oklahoma-Texas thing needs to get done quickly in terms of their moving to the SEC for the Big 12's sake because here's the thing. If Cincinnati or BYU upsets Arkansas, you want to bring them into the conference as quick as possible. Now, they're coming in anyway this year. Right. But if Oklahoma and Texas are out quicker, then – it doesn't hurt quite as bad if you've got teams like Cincinnati and BYU that can say we've beaten these squads, you know, SEC squads here recently. But if you have Oklahoma and Texas still in the conference, people are going to be like, nobody cares that Cincinnati beat Arkansas. They're still, you still got Oklahoma and Texas. They're still the big dogs. You want to be able to claim these victories for your conference and hang on to them and have them be the big dog. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And I read yeah. some today. Uh, I think Oklahoma and Texas. Here's here's my prediction today, based on things I've read and interpreted. Uh, I say uh, Oklahoma and Texas will be in the SEC in 24, not 25. Mm -hmm. I think one year early, 24. I think, so, I think next year 23, they'll all be in the Big 12. It'll be a 14 team league, uh, which is funny because they've had you know just 10 teams in that league for a long time, but uh, 14. We'll be in the Big 12 next year, and then Texas and Oklahoma will leave, and then it'll be 12 again. But, uh, yeah, I, I think Texas and Oklahoma will be here a year early. But you didn't predict the game, so. Oh, which game? Oh, Cincinnati, Arkansas. Arkansas <laughs> big. Ar no, uh, not Arkansas. Arkansas <coughs> comfortably. Arkansas comfortably. Cincinnati a good team. Cincinnati may not lose after. Cincinnati may finish 11-1. and one. Uh, I like their new quarterback, Ben Bryant. He is actually a portal transfer from Eastern Michigan, where he was one of the best quarterbacks in the MAC. QB country guy? Nope. Just okay. a good player. Um, and finally, Georgia and Oregon, and uh, we all think they, this has not been announced. AJ Jefferson's a QB country guy. Oh, that's cool. We all believe that Bo Nix will be the quarterback for Oregon. Yep. That will keep me from pulling for Oregon, I think. I, <laughs> I really do. I mean – is there any more Auburn quarterback than Bo Nix in the history of Auburn quarterbacks? Maybe Jeff Berger. I mean, oh, I like Berger. Uh, but Bo Nix has been completely unlikable by any other fan base. I'm not sure Auburn fans like him anymore. And um, <laughs> and so yeah, I, it's in the end. I'm probably going to hope Oregon wins, but it's not because of Bo Nix. You know, which Auburn won a lot of games despite Bo Nix too. Here's my thinking. I might be wish casting here. I think that's something I do. That's why I'm not good picking games. I think sometimes I pick games because I because I want it to go a certain way. That that's that's a terrible way to analyze a game. Uh, I, I uh, how about this? Um, I, I'm going to say Georgia's going to win because it would be such a stunning upset. But uh, close, close. So, yeah, seventies point for next Oregon make it close. I, I think Georgia wins by one score. Let me say this too. I. I Saw Bo Nix play a lot in high school. I thought he was going to be a thing, man. I really did. And he's still not bad. All that talent is still there somewhere. It just wouldn't click in while he was at Auburn. He's got a and, better um, team at Oregon. He's going to have better players around he's him. Got, he's got he better players at Oregon. Oregon, too. You're right about that. And the irony is he beat Oregon the first time he ever suited up for college. And This and is so weird. Not, probably not facing SEC level defenses every week might help, although ironically he gets one right out of the gate. <laughs> that but, is uh, true. This, game, this is a total irony game. You know, the former, really is. the former uh, uh, Georgia coordinator coming home to play his team, Bo Nix, you know, coming to back to uh, play in Atlanta. Uh, I, I mean, this is bizarre. But, uh, yeah, yeah word I think warning, Georgia, Word of warning to Bo, though, uh, and he knows this, Ty Thompson, the, the backup at Oregon, is really good. good. Yeah, They're eager to see him play. Uh, Bo's going to have a pretty short leash, you know, in terms of like, 
you better play good every week or you might not have a job because they're excited about Ty Thompson. All right, buddy, that's going to do it for today's podcast. We will be back tomorrow with another Locked on Bama. Until then, everybody, roll tide. Roll tide.